that I said, the lot of enterprise application still our our old technology, old school technology like plain JDBC or standard JDBC connection, Spring and Spring JDBC come a little bit later, and then JDBC template. And that's why I'm I'm trying to introduce a new new screencast like section like 38 dot number is still there one to 38 dot one dot 35. You can look for this how the 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 monolithic application the, all the big enterprise still there is a lot of the JDBC plain JDBC standard connections used Spring JDBC used and then that's why I'm trying to give it to you from the very beginning to the end level. That means. If you if you are still if you if you already had some application like still in the SQL based I mean the plain JDBC or standard JDBC based applications then how you can how can you come up with the maybe the Spring JDBC and after that you come up with JPA or Hibernate or J, Spring Data JPA that's that's the idea to give it to the very beginning level to the to the to the really modern and latest technology that's why I put it like screencast number 36 as like uh, the spring spring data JPA and it's hibernate hibernate spatial ORM and then there is a new screencast there is a it will be shorter screencast like 38 dot something and there is a discussion how the plain JDBC and standard JDBC works and then how you can come up to the to the spring JDBC Spring JDBC with even though that the idea I would like to give it to you idea how can you parallelly use that means you use still 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 using the plain JDBC or ten JDBC and then in parallel same time you you come up the new technology like Spring JDBC then then Spring JPA and the Spring Data JPA and then come up the new microservice based applications that's the idea so even though those technology is possible to run and parallelly and even though in the in nowadays the, all the enterprise application they are trying to migrate from the from the old technology to new technology like such a way that some some core functionality still there is a plain JDBC and a standard JDBC and then some some modular functionality like some part of the application they come up with the JPA or or Spring Data JPA technology. That's that's the migration process. It takes times, but the companies, uh, that the, all the enterprise application they started. That's I learned from my last uh, experiences. They are they are starting to move through, move move forward to the to the old school to the new school or new te old technology to the new technology. That's why I'm trying to give it to you through different screencast how the the old school works and how how the from the old school to the to the new school come or, or new, old technology to the new technology come how can you come out or how can you run parallelly these two technology it is sometimes hard to uh, to uh, it's it's, it's sometimes is resource intensive but uh, we need to the come up the some solution then we the the older technology older technology core function need to be come up with the with the new technology that's why sometimes some some many developers think about like this way but still we are parallelly running old technology and new technology for the same products but we are still migrating uh, from the from the from the old technology to the new technology that's the the process we are doing every day every life uh, every developer in, the, in the, their development development process so just follow this one also the 38 dot something and then how the the plain jdbc standard jdbc and spring jdbc works to 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 expose your 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 to expose or to develop your microservices or your risk and apis that's that's the idea that's why i said here that the plain jdbc spring jdbc and templates in data jpa and this is the process flow how can you come up the from the old technology to the new technology so here is the I, I already discussed about the last screencast this this flow why and how you can use the spring J, J data JPA and JPA ORM and Hibernate. This you see, see the technology stack. So we we know everybody knows there is a two technology the uh, databases in the backend server. So non SQL based data structure databases and SQL based data. The SQL based database we, everybody knows maybe MySQL, Postgres. And then Oracle or DB2 Infomax, this we are SQL based databases. And non SQL, MongoDB, Cassandra, Redis, Gamefire, and, and maybe Graph, GraphQ, then this is non SQL based. This means object to based database. So if you have a like any real, if you have no, if you, if the, if you have no JDBC, then you have 
uh, I believe you have it like ORM, the objectivational mappings, and that's like Hibernate here. And then you have it just in top of the ORM, you have a Java Persistence APIs. And then on the top of the Java Persistence API, you have a top of the Spring Data JPA. That's the, that's the idea to how how the how the architecture the flow works. And after that, uh, I will show you later in the later section of the uh, this one these graphs. So data section this graph how it works so here you see the the process we have it uh, depending on the your your backend servers uh, you have a decisions with a non-sql based database or a sql based database and you define your domains or your object model or entity models or water models and then you define your persistence apis and then you call it like spring data jpa and top of this this abstract layer to expose your all the the necessary endpoints or to to develop your necessary uh, rest 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 apis so you see that the no code repository pattern the for code operation just is simply that simply use the existing crude repository or paging or sorting repository or jpa repository depending uh, it's depending uh, on your uh, but but for for the code during the code operation you do nothing to do just define your entity model with the respective <coughs> code repositories and you can get it everything in the use the boilerplate code i said here i generated uh, queries by method name i will show you detail when i start the developments how it works how the query methods <coughs> sorry here is the good the really most important questions uh, that's the the viewers and subscriber ask me that's why i formulate like this it is not good way to formulation but it's still clear so if you saw the pictures, I have like uh, non-SQL database, I have like a SQL database. So there is a possibility ORM and then top of the ORM and there is a JDBC. If you still in the parallel running your application with old school, old technology to new technology, still you have a possibility of JDBC and a SQL connection. With the JDBC and SPING JDBC, then you have it in top of this one, there's a JPA persistent, Java persistent API, and then there is a Spring data spring data jpa that's i show here the detail a little bit detail and then here you expose uh, all the custom rest apis or microservices that's that means you have this if you look for there is a the two different layers of development so this is maybe the sql developer developments the, some sql developer did their sql development database preparation database development and this is the one of the layer there may be the API developer, the middle layer developers, the microservice developers. So he define if he is not uh, the JDBC and he define all the entity models or domain models or object models and and fit it like in the mid Hibernate and build the necessary the you backends databases or tables or or ORMs. What do you mean? So you define your all the custom RAN APIs we we expose our our models our, our api our data sets into as, as rest endpoints and all the microservices demand. so that, that means this is the microservices maybe you have a 10 or 15 different type of microservice let's say microservices be the documentation microservices payment microservices billing microservices invoice microservices administrative process microservices user registration microservices and then for my case maybe the the plot registration, building registration, flow registration, unit registration, doesn't matter. If you are working with the health sectors, maybe there is a lot of microservices for the for the health management, the call management, or the, the emergency management system microservices, the doctor management microservices, or infrastructure management microservices. Those, all the microservices, you define it, you build it, you deploy the microservices to the different machines or anywhere, any other in the clouds. And then you call, simply call what technology stack you try to build. That's why I said this. If you look for the closed loop, this is one of the clear, really clear part. So you, you define your microservices, you deploy your microservices in somewhere in, in machines or in the cloud, just you call the microservice. And now it's a de decision which technology is tech. Which programming language or technology stack you are? If you are Java or Groovy, uh, you try to develop your Java based on uh, in, try to develop your GUI or UI front end because just you need to decide. Okay, I am in Java, then I have uh, possibilities to for, to build my GUI at GSP. This is all the technology, 
and that's in time leap. This is in another technology. Let's say I say this is the ZSP. I have the screencast number 33. That is a 